we're in a very interesting period of time right now. Well, maybe I find it more interesting than a lot of people. I wanted to talk briefly today about negative real interest rates. We've repeatedly been told by mainstream economics teachers that people are compensated in the financial world for the risk that they take. The higher the risk, the higher the rate of return. The more you should be compensated for the risk that you take with a higher expected reward. At least that's the theory. But that doesn't seem to be the case with bonds right now. What I'm showing here is a plot of 10-year Treasury nominal interest rates going back to the early 1960s. I have also included on this plot the yearly change in general prices as reflected by the Consumer Price Index. We can see that for much of the past 60 years, the difference between the two has been about 3 to 5 percent. In other words, people who were willing to take the risk of having their wealth tied up in Federal Reserve notes for a duration of 10 years were rewarded with a 3 to 5 percent real rate of return. There are a couple of notable exceptions. The first exception was in the 1970s. This was a period of time when there was significant distrust in the Federal Reserve note. Prices increased quickly, and people fled into tangible items, including gold, to protect their purchasing power. Clearly tiny or even negative real rates of return on the 10-year Treasury were not sufficient to incentivize investors to risk their wealth in the Federal Reserve note. This was turned around in the early 1980s when Paul Volcker broke the back of this downward spiral by raising short-term interest rates significantly. The next 25 years or so were a period of reasonable real yields. But over the past 15 years or so, real yields have been quite low. Let's take a look at the real yield as indicated by the 10-year Treasury Inflation Protected Security, or TIPS. As we know, just like in the 1970s, the past 15 years have been pretty good for gold priced in Federal Reserve notes. In 2005, the price of gold was in the neighborhood of $500 to $600 per troy ounce. Now gold's price is about triple that. Over the same period of time, real interest rates have been below 2%. So we can infer from this that 2% real rates are too low of a return to incentivize investors to tie up their wealth in Federal Reserve notes at least not all investors. And this makes good fundamental sense. After all, even for a person who has absolute faith in the Federal Reserve note, there is still a risk associated with holding a 10-year bond that rates will increase and drive down the value of that bond. When rates are quite low, there is a better risk to reward profile for holding bonds of shorter duration than 10 years. But what are we to make of negative real rates of return? Why are bond buyers willing to accept a certain loss of purchasing power in return for locking up their wealth in a vehicle that has risk? I can see two possibilities. The first possibility is that the public has accepted what they are frequently told, that U.S. Treasuries are risk-free. Maybe they are so freaked out with current events that they are swarming to the supposed safety of U.S. Treasury investments. Perhaps many of them don't know that they are guaranteed to lose by doing so. Maybe they are more worried that their losses will be bigger and more assured if they keep their wealth in stocks. After all, stocks are the only other asset people can buy, right? I say this tongue-in-cheek. Though the reality is that for many U.S. citizens who have their wealth tied up in 401k plans, bonds and stocks really are the only asset choice that they have available to them. Now, the other possibility is that the Federal Reserve and other world central banks are printing currency and buying their own government debt as well as treasury securities with abandon. This is creating demand for these instruments, even when private buyers would otherwise be uninterested due to low or negative real yields. The central banks can act in a way that is non-economic. That's because they act in a way that is more politically motivated. Of course, it could be that both factors are at work. Maybe private investors have no idea what is going on and are willing to accept zero to negative real rates, and maybe the world's central banks are just making the situation worse. What does that mean for the typical saver who currently undersaves and counts on investment returns to do the heavy lifting for them? Surely disappointment is waiting for them. I fear what kind of political winds may blow 
when the dreams that they have been sold vanish in a puff of smoke. Fortunately for my subscribers, their real wealth will be nowhere to be found when that time comes.